Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends, and welcome to another video with your host, Andrew. Now, first off, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, let's face it, uh, 2020 was pretty much a write-off for pen shows and a lot of things in general. So, crossing fingers, let's hope 2021 will be much better. Uh, let's hope that the vaccine works and this new strain of COVID, which has sort of come out of the UK, can be nipped in the bud fairly shortly. So, Enough of COVID, enough of 2020, let's get on with 2021 and have a look at this very beautiful pen, which is the Narwhal School Kill 365 Limited Edition. So let's roll the titles and see what we have. Right, ladies and gentlemen, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you an overview, writing sample, the size comparisons and my thoughts and feelings. Right, now onto the pen itself. So what do we get with our Narwhal 365 Limited Edition? We get a very nice box. We get a pleather pouch. And we get the pen. Very nice indeed. So what I'm going to do, whilst I've got the pen here, I'm going to give you the dimensions, size, and the filling capacities. Wonderful. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the overviews of this pen. So on the top, we have got a gold disc, sans the logo, which I think would be a nice inclusion. Then it comes down onto the cap itself with a very reminiscent clip, which is very akin and I'd say identical to that of the regular school kill models. Underneath, we have got a medium stainless steel nib on a plastic feed with a beautifully imprinted Narwhal logo on there, as you can see, very beautiful. And then we get a very comfortable um, section. Uh, no matter what size hands you've got, I feel that this pen will be suitable for those. Having said that, the length of the pen um, I'm posted may be a little bit short for people which have got larger hands and uh, may wish to hold it down here where the section is a little bit uh, narrower. Um, but I still find this um, a comfortable pen to use and I am quite lucky in that I have not actually found a pen which is drastically uncomfortable to use. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm very lucky in that respect. Um, okay, so let's put the cap back on. Next of all, we have got the ink window. So you can see the ink sloshing around in there. I wish more manufacturers would include those. Uh, I, I found them really practical for everyday use. Next of all, we have got this very, very nice uh, long barrel section, which is almost the same length as that as the cap, maybe just a few millimeters longer, then a gold ring, then onto the piston turning cap in which you can also see the limited edition number imprinted on there. And this is number 90 out of 365. And whilst I'm talking about the limited editions, uh, Narwhal was actually very clever. They actually phased the limited edition run on this pen uh, in two or three batches, uh, or maybe possibly even more, but I certainly know there's um, been a minimum of two runs. Uh, I went to Scritura Elegante in Holland, uh, who provided this um, pen, and I put my name down on the waiting list because the first batch had run out. So I know certainly there's been a minimum of two, uh, two lists, uh, which is great. I, I think it's um, a really good way of actually releasing a pen. It means you don't have to rush your production. Uh, also, it gives people plenty of time to save up um, for the pen and um, potentially look out on the second hand market uh, should people not like the first batch. So. Let's get on with the rest of this pen. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna go on to the writing sample, then the size comparisons, and then my thoughts and feelings. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we have got the Narwhal. And this is the school kill. And this is such a weird spelling, S-C-H-U-Y-L-K. Well, that's an awful K, but looks more like a B. Apologies. <laughs> School kill. Um, trying out a new, cap uh, new uh, form of K, so don't judge me too harshly on that, please. <laughs> Limited edition. Uh, nib is a steel medium, which I'll abbreviate to SM. Ink today, I think, is very apt. It is uh, Diamine Oxblood. And no bl 
boxes were harmed in the making of this ink. Ho ho. <laughs> right, let's move that up a little bit. Okay, let's write out the quick brown fox. And I have to say that this nib really performs quite wonderfully. That's a better K. <laughs> quick brown. And then this sort of cold conservatory, yeah, you can really smell the ebonite coming from this pen. It doesn't smell very nice. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the style of the pen. Um, I'm gonna give it a, a solid seven, um, just purely because I feel that the material could have been a hair lighter, um, certainly in comparison to what you see online. It doesn't necessarily represent the actual um, pen, which is a bit of a shame. Um, that's not to say that there won't be other pens which Narwhal have made which are different. Obviously, um, colour variants does differ, um, but yeah, it's still a decent pen. It's still a decent pen, which is nice. Performance, though, is a solid 10. Flex. Oh, hang on, we need to do wetness and uh, flex in a moment. Uh, so value, I'm going to give it a, a 10. And let's just do the rest of this. So we've got the wetness. Ooh, and line variation to do. Almost forgot that. Cool, right, so let's do the wetness. So one pass, pretty decent. Two passes, yeah, not too bad. Um, line variation, let's have a look. Nothing really there, nothing to really shake about, talk, talk about, I should say. And I am putting down a huge amount of pressure just to get anything out of there. So I wouldn't buy this pen to, to flex with, hence uh, the score for two out of 10. So <laughs> apologies about the incoherency of that uh, little writing sample. But um, yeah, <laughs> let's go on to doing the size comparisons and then I'll give you my final thoughts and feelings on this pen. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, from left to right, we have got a, a Twisby Go in blue, and then we have got a Narwhal School Kill in Chromeless Teal, then a Narwhal School Kill in uh, the sort of 365, I'm guessing a Cherry Red Ebonite, but it's actually quite a lot darker, so I'm gonna call it Claret Ebonite. And then we have got uh, my customized uh, Lamy Safari, which hopefully will be on its way to a new owner soon. So let's get these uh, pens uncapped. Okay, and here we go. And these are the pens uncapped. So we've got the Twisby Go, the Noel School Kill in Cronus Teal, the Noel School Kill 365 Limited Edition, and the Lamy Safari. And they're all fairly similar in size. I would argue that, well, the Twisby Go is ever so slightly shorter, um, but it's got a massive section on there. Absolutely massive goes right up to uh, this point and yeah, it's a lovely pen. Anyway, let's go on to my thoughts and feelings on this pen and we will wrap up the video. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what are my thoughts and feelings on this Narwhal 365? Well, first of all, we're gonna talk about the presentation of this. Uh, it's a very nice box. Um, unfortunately, the runners on here aren't particularly smooth, uh, which is a great shame to be honest, because um, other than that, it's a very um, beautifully presented box. Uh, the, the wood is um, not of high quality, but for £75, I wouldn't expect it to be. Uh, I just feel it's a nice um, way of presenting your pen, and it's slightly different to that of the clamshell cases, which you are probably more accustomed to. Uh, inside, uh, it would have been quite nice also to have a pen pillow. Uh, I feel that really would add to some of the luxury quality of this limited edition. Um, and I don't feel that um, it would have added too much more to the cost. Again, um, having an outer sleeve for this with this um, sticker with a barcode on here would um, be very nice. I feel that sticking this to the box itself sort of cheapens the box a little bit, which is a bit of a shame. Um, the pen case, which um, is included with this, is very stiff and trying to put the pen in here can be a bit of a mission. So let's just try and put that in the best I can. 
and it does go in, but it's the tolerance in here is so tight that I possibly wouldn't use this on a daily basis. Uh, but it does fit in there and it fits okay. Um, I, as I say, I've got um, other cases which the pen can fit in and is slightly better. And trying to get this pen back out again, it's really tough. So it's a nice inclusion. I just feel that maybe um, the actual presentation of this case could have just given a little bit more um, headroom for the pen to sit in. Um, other than that, it's a nice thought and it's certainly something which you don't tend to see in sub 100 pound pens. Um, the Ebonite, it's, whilst it's nice uh, and you can see some sort of strains of the, the little uh, light red areas coming through, I just don't feel it offers enough variance in order to actually really appreciate the, the variance of those sort of um, almost like wood grain textures. Uh, had it been lighter like in the actual pictures on Instagram, I think this would have um, really given it a lot more sort of pizzazz. Um, so what do I really like about this pen? Well, like all narwhals, they write out of the box. Uh, they're comfortable pens. <coughs> the feed keeps up nicely. And as I say, you do have the inclusion of that ink window, which makes it a very practical pen. Um, who would I recommend this pen to and who I would I not recommend it to? So I'd certainly recommend this to anyone who is wanting an interesting pen. And when I talk about an interesting pen, a pen which features a more interesting filling mechanism as opposed to um, the standard cartridge uh, converters which you get. Uh, this really does offer something to that sort of firm crowd without having to spend a lot of money. I appreciate, you know, you've got companies like Opus which do eyedroppers with their Japanese uh, shutoff valves and you've got uh, Twisby out there as well and they both um, offer some quite interesting variances. Uh, so yeah, there, there, there are other companies uh, which are doing it, but in a sea of pens which are ten, generally cartridge converters, uh, yeah, you, you do get something um, a little bit extra for your money. Uh, for not very much more than this, you could get yourself a Pelican, uh, which may be a slightly better buy, but um, having said that, this is a bigger pen than the M400 or the M200, and I think you, this is more comparable to the 600 to 800 uh, range. So you are getting quite a lot of um, pen for your money, um, certainly in terms of uh, size. Okay, so um, who else would this pen not be for? Um, I guess for those who don't like Ebonite and prefer shinier pens, uh, yeah, you, you can't get away from the fact that this material does look a little bit boring, unfortunately. I love Ebonites, I, I really do, but in order to really be able to show off the, the, the beauty of Ebonite, I feel you need to be able to see more variants in the actual uh, colors, which is a bit of a shame. I, I feel this is a missed opportunity in that respect, but I do love the color of the trim. I think it does uh, suit the pen very nicely, and it's, uh, it's, it's something a little bit different. I think Narwhal are so close with this pen, uh, I just feel that maybe having that lighter Ebonite color would really give it uh, the extra wow factor, and one which I was hoping for, Unfortunately, as I say, and I will reiterate, this does not represent that of the pictures on Instagram. And this may be something which you enjoy. You know, aesthetics at the end of the day is a very personal choice. And this is my review channel, so it's my thoughts and feelings. This should not really discourage you from actually going out to buy this pen. You may prefer dark ebonites, uh, I don't know. So just take my review with a pinch of salt and I hope it doesn't really deter you from actually making your purchasing um, choice. Even though what I am trying to do is give you a bit more of an overview of what this pen is like to write with um, in terms of performance. And that, in that respect, it does work very well. Okay, so that really leaves it for today. Um, all I just have to say is thank you for watching. I hope your 2021 goes um, incredibly well. I hope uh, anyone who is suffering with COVID in your friends or family circles <clears throat> uh, get better soon. Sorry, <laughs> I've not, not got COVID. I've just got uh, a tickly uh, throat today for some reason. Um, I've been doing a lot of talking today and I think that's probably what is spurring it on. So next week, hopefully, or the week after, we should be getting our Pelican M600 red tortoiseshell review done with Alicia, aka Adventure Denali. Very much looking forward to that. Uh, that is going to be something slightly interesting to edit in the fact that we are recording the video separately and we're not doing it as a, a live actual video, which may probably in hindsight be a damn sight easier to do. But uh, I'm trying to um, improve my editing skills and this is one way of trying to do something which is a bit more ambitious. 
and hopefully the transitions between myself and Alicia should look a bit more interesting as opposed to having a split screen. Anyway, um, that really does leave it um, for today. Thank you again once, 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 once again. <laughs> That's a, a lot of multiple ones, sorry. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you stay safe. I hope your 2021 again is fantastic and I will see you in the next review or drawing sample or ink review or whichever comes first. Till then, bye bye for now.